I am so excited. This semester has been a nightmare. And I am, after the semester one class from graduating, I will be free of school until grad school. But it's still exciting. I went to the cardiologist yesterday. I'm so, can't really say mad. Um, I didn't see the cardiologist I normally see. And I don't really like the nurse practitioner who did come to see me. And so we got in a little bit of an argument while I was there. And it could have probably gone a lot better. But that's okay. She has problems believing some of my symptoms. And we're playing baseball outside my window. Um, Dr. Fox, who's the cardiologist I normally see, believes my symptoms. He's witnessed my symptoms. Um, he has talked to other doctors who have witnessed my symptoms. Especially my passing out. And she has a hard time believing it. She's never witnessed it. And so that was a problem. Not only that, she came in and one of the first things she said to me, she rephrased it quickly. I don't really think she meant it the way she did, but she was trying to say that if I can't get into an exercise program in the next, you know, 10, 20 years, I'm going to become very, very fat. And the way she said it initially was, you are fat. And it kind of made me mad because I lost 10 pounds since I was there two weeks ago. And I'm only 145 pounds. And that's the smallest I've been in my entire life. In high school, I weighed 160 pounds, and that's me in the orange. So I get a little ticked off when people look at me the way I am now and tell me I'm fat because I changed my lifestyle. I ate healthy. I eat healthy now. I follow the diets the doctors want me to be on. I don't eat junk food. Um, and I try to walk. And for someone to tell me that, that I'm fat now just kind of makes me mad because they don't know what I was before. I can fit in clothes that are worn in 5th grade. Now. I'm 24. Um, so that, that was interesting and it really bothered me that she would not listen to me. My blood pressure was good sitting and they took it while I was standing because I told them I am having a lot of problems with that right now. But, when they couldn't register it while I was standing for a few minutes, it took two nurses to figure out what my blood pressure was standing. And it went from 123 over 78 sitting to 81 over 43 standing. And she didn't believe me that I was symptomatic. 
because I had not passed out in her presence. And so I have to take the meds still. And I'm weary of this, but this is what she wants me to do. And if she wants to see what the, the consequences are going to be, I will gladly go see her in a week and tell her I can't do this anymore. But I'm not going to argue it now. I need to, I know my body is having a lot of issues right now with it being, um, the end of the semester for me. Um, last week I had to do two all-nighters in a row. I got a couple hours of sleep in the mornings, um, in the library on campus. I had actually told my friends that if they found me unconscious on campus to leave me alone because I wasn't sleeping. I was trying to write papers and it was wearing on me. It still is. I had this weekend a cyclic vomiting spell where I, it is horrible, I have severe nausea and vomiting for hours and this one actually lasted for like two and a half days and now I'm really dehydrated and I can't seem to gain fluids back and it's wearing on me and it's the last week of classes and finals start on Friday and I had presentations yesterday and today and but I have to be back in campus in an hour and a half to do more school for more classes. I have labs and practice skits and group projects and I really, really, really need IV fluids right now. But I cannot go to the doctor until Thursday and I don't have time to go to the hospital until Thursday and at that point I can go on campus and get them and not have to sit in the emergency room. I just, I know God will get me to there. But it's just been a crazy week and a half within my encounter with the doctor yesterday. And I just, I know it would all be okay. I know I had two sets of labs come back, or not two sets of labs. Um, I had the lab work from the cardiologist um, come back, not necessarily normal, they were high, but they were borderline high, so they're not concerned at all, um, but I had also had to have MRIs of my knee. Um, a month ago and the results came back for that and they weren't what we were hoping structurally everything's alright um, there's a small tear of my MCL which is the ligament on the inside of my knee where like your two knees would kind of go together if you put them together this side right between them that's the side, um, that's the side, and the inner side is where the tear is, um, it's very small, I'm waiting to go see the orthopedic, but we doubt it will have to be surgery, um, but I fell on it now, almost five and a half months ago, and I'm still having problems with it, it's really swollen, and it makes the bottom half of my leg swollen, but they're thinking they're going to have to biopsy 
the lymph nodes in my knee, which I'm not excited about because that means more tests. And I'm so over tests and more tests. And I don't want to have to go meet with another doctor, which I won't have to anyway because I'm switching primary doctors in Boone. So this is how I'm going to go in with my head. I just feel like I don't want to do it. But it'll be okay. The doctor I'm going to is a great doctor. Um, I already think she's amazing and I've never actually saw her as a patient, but I've seen her coming into the hospital um, to visiting her patients and stuff like that. And um, the doctor I'm with right now, one like the primary doctor I see right now, does not visit in the hospital. So I'm going to switch to her and she's at least a female. So maybe she'll listen a little better because that's been my experience anyway. Um, and maybe she'll have a new insight. So, I mean, that's the exciting part, I guess, about my visit yesterday. She's going to get me in sooner to see her. Um, I've been waiting on the waiting list, um, for when they're accepting new patients. And so she's going to go ahead and bump me up on the list and get me an appointment with her. So, although I wasn't really fond of the, you know, person I saw yesterday, I guess it had its perks. So, but, we'll see. Hopefully, continuing these meds do not completely, this thing will not bottom me out more than it already is before I can be done with finals. After finals, it can do whatever it wants, but I'm having nightmares and flashbacks of finals two and a half years ago, where I was so dehydrated, and I didn't know this until way after the fact, and my roommates dragged me to the hospital, that I couldn't read the words on my exam papers because they were moving. I was so dizzy, and it was horrible, and I don't want to go through that again for exams. Um, I know my professors would work with me, but the exams that I'm concerned about are the ones with group members and skits and conversations and such like that for my German class and you have to have a partner and I don't want to be the kid who leaves their partner partnerless uh, everything this semester I've done by myself for all the oral exams and everything I haven't had a partner and now I do so that stress added to final stress and the end semester stress and everything. It's just crazy. So I'm hoping that maybe this little bit of rest and drinking like a gallon of water will help me. And all I gotta say is six days, 11 hours, 30 minutes. I can sleep all I want. And that's great. Guys. God likes us to sleep, and I feel like I haven't had enough of that. So, I hope everyone's doing well, and, or at least better than me, and that you'll have an awesome weather, and hopefully it's not like my weather where it's 40 one day and 80 degrees the next, and 20 the next, and raining, and all over the place because it does not help when you have autonomic problems. So, talk to y'all later.